I'm Evan. I'm Haley. Uh, we're the Conway family, along with our son Oliver and our son Alex. Our son Oliver was diagnosed with a cancerous brain tumor in May of 2023 at age eight. Um, and he went from being our soccer loving little boy to uh, emergency taken over to BC Children's in Vancouver, where we spent the next uh, number of weeks meeting with doctors, neurosurgeons, oncologists. He went right in for um, a major life-saving surgery to have a tumor removed uh, from his brain, which was thankfully able to be fully removed. And then um, we were very soon told that it was going to be sent, the tumor would be sent away for testing and that it, we should expect a cancer diagnosis. Um, we went home, we collected our thoughts for about a week or so, and then we were straight back over to BC Children's um, for the better part of 10 months, uh, where Ollie was largely an inpatient and he um, went straight into chemotherapy, really rigorous. High dose chemo. High dose chemotherapy. <clears throat> and. Our family moved to Vancouver. We lived at the Ronald McDonald House. And yeah, his, his journey began. Yeah, one of the hardest things we've ever been through was sitting down and meeting with an oncology team to discuss saving your son's life and which treatment option do you want to choose. Um, we were presented with two. There was the standard of care, which offered um, moderate uh, chemotherapy uh, preceded by the standard of care dose of radiation to the tumor site. Um, or he could participate in a clinical trial, which was open to children within his age group. And it meant uh, starting with a really high toxicity level chemotherapy. We chose this option of care for Oliver because it meant that the radiation he would receive after would be a lower dose of radiation. And when you're talking radiation for a kid, you're talking high dose radiation to his brain and his spine. You have to treat the entire cerebrospinal fluid area. It's not just the tumor site. So they were, it was really interesting meeting our team and they were unfortunately like not surprised. They commonly meet children who are eight years old who are diagnosed with this particular brain tumor. When we first went left to go to Vancouver, we picked him up from school. We had gotten the call that morning from our doctor saying, this is what this is. He has a very large, scary brain tumor. And I remember picking him up, he's sitting in those that row of chairs just outside the office and he's just, you would never know, like looking at him. And he was just like, what is it? Like, what's up? Like, what? why did you, why did you pull me from recess? I was playing soccer with my friends. And we were like, hey, the doctors found what's going on with the headaches and we actually have to go and see a doctor in Vancouver about it. And he was just like, oh, how long will I be? Can I come back? Because I want to finish my recess. And so just even those first, that first week in Vancouver with surgery and like the build up to surgery and meeting with specialists and everything, and he's saying, I just can't wait to get back to school. I want to finish my game. So for us, bringing him home and him saying, can I go to school now? It was like, yeah, we got to get you back to that recess. We got to get you back to that game. Yeah. That his blood pressure was con constantly monitored. And um, so the nurse had come in to just do a routine check. He seemed very well and fine, considering what he had received that day for chemo. But she took his blood pressure and it had suddenly dropped really low. And he was very urgently rushed down to the pediatric ICU. And in those moments, like just everything goes narrow and you have tunnel vision because you just see your kid being wheeled off in their hospital bed and they're telling you to just grab what you can because you got to get downstairs. Um, we get down to the ICU and there's immediately like the room is full of team members. Everybody is acting very fast and you know that when everybody's moving quickly, something's not okay. Something's up. So we get in there and they tell me I needed to lay down beside him but on his arm because they needed to get an arterial line into him. An arterial line is like 10 times worse than an IV. And so this is a kid who's like fully awake, you know, fully coherent. We're trying to get some meds into him um, however we can so that he won't be aware of what's going to happen in his arm. 
throughout getting, that was probably the hardest moment, was like laying on top of him basically as they're pinning him down to try and get this line into him. He needed to have life-saving medicine, that uh, adrenaline medicine, right? Epinephrine, norepinephrine, um, to just keep his body going because his blood pressure had dropped so much they were worried about his heart stopping. And those are the moments you just think like that you never consider when you like go to have kids. You're like, this is gonna be hard, but we can do it. You know, having kids is a hard thing. Um, parenting is never easy, but yeah, these are the moments that you just feel so wildly unprepared for and no nothing that you ever consider. You never think that your kid is going to be the one who's going to have this journey, right? Or that cancer is going to be a part of your life. Like cancer was not in our wheelhouse. It, there's, there wasn't the family history. There is no indication for it. It just came and slammed you in the face one day and you just, we just up and left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oliver had just started his chemotherapy in the spring of 23 and we saw him so crushed, so broken and we had just shaved his head because his hair had started to fall out and I think that was the hardest thing because he's crying and he's upset because you can see his hair all over the bed. Um, you still see it and you're still like this is real. This is happening. Um, and so he was just, he was low. It was about a month in to his treatment and he was missing school. It was the end of the school year. He's missing all the fun days. Um, he's missing his friends. He didn't get to finish his soccer term at, at home. And we just were looking like, what can we do to bring him some joy? And he had gotten to be a part of some Pacific FC games here at home already just through his local soccer club getting to be um, some of those kids that get to go out with the players at the beginning of the game. The package I believe arrived at Ronald McDonald House yeah. and we at the beginning you know when things would arrive for us they were sort of a bit of a surprise and we thought oh okay like I didn't what 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 could this be and we could see where it was from and we could see this message from the guys on the package and we were just like I just, I grabbed it and I ran it back over to him at the hospital. I booked it right over because I knew the, the smile it would bring, the joy. And he was absolutely beside himself. He was so excited to get that package and for the message on the front of it from the team, uh, wishing him well. He was just, he was so pumped. He ripped that thing right open. Yep. Uh, Jersey went on right away. He asked us, he got a cool water bottle. He wasn't allowed to have any of the water. Like he wasn't allowed to use it. Um, and he got a soccer ball. He couldn't wait. Can we fill this up? We don't have anything to fill it up with, buddy. Um, he just couldn't wait. And then, um, and then he, this uh, amazing video that accompanied it uh, from the team, from the guys, inviting him to a practice. And he talked about that practice all year. Mom, when do I get to go? And have you arranged that yet? When do I get to go to practice? Because I get to go to a practice when I get home. I get to go to PFC. I get to play with the boys. So simple, like getting to come to practice with all these role models. They might not realize the impact they had on his life, but he is over the moon to be here. And it's just something simple as attending practice with these great guys. He's never going to forget it. Just that we're so grateful. Yeah. We're so grateful to the club, to the team, to you guys, to everyone who has reached out, who put that video together and sent it off. Just taking the time to do that. I know that you didn't have to do that. Um, whoever got the kit and sent together and sent over to us, you didn't have to do that and just choosing to say yes to this little boy and to just send that love, not knowing him, not knowing how it would be received, not knowing us, like, thank you.